People are following tutorials in one of two ways. One, they're watching steps A, B, and C, and then they're rewinding back to step A, pausing it, and then doing step A themselves. And then they resume the video to step B, and they pause it again, and then they do step B themselves. That's one way. The other way is that they watch step A, B, and C, then pause, and then they do steps A, B, and C. Sometimes they get it right and everything's fine, but sometimes they miss something because there's just more they have to hold in their short-term memory. And when they do miss something, it's often some tiny detail. And then steps D, E, and F don't seem to work quite right, or maybe they do, and only until they get to step Q, R, and S do they suddenly realize that they missed something way earlier. In fact, we're all probably doing a little bit of both, right? But let's imagine that we're just starting to learn something, so we take the safe route and pause each step of the way. When we do this, we can expect to complete tutorials and course lessons at about twice the length of the video runtime. So that is to say, if it takes us one minute to watch how to do step A, it might take us around one minute to do it ourselves. So a one hour tutorial might end up taking around two hours to complete. But that would be assuming that what we are watching is video of only the task being performed and nothing else. And how often does that happen? If you're teaching something, you're offering an explanation of what you're doing, why and how. Otherwise, we wouldn't really need anyone to teach us. All it would take would be just to watch someone doing something. And in fact, we do find that watching each other do things is actually a great way to learn. If you're genuinely engaged, you can begin to understand things that aren't even said and begin to understand the methods and the reasons behind them. However, there are some shortcomings of trying to learn things by merely observing. First, not everything we do has an apparent reason, because often things we do have long-term effects. We do things for broader reasons related to the structure of our activities. Watching someone work can be like watching a painter painting, but only ever looking at the one square centimeter of their canvas that their brush is currently touching. You see shades of greens, for sure, and the directions of the stroke and the amount of strokes, how long they've been adding these green strokes, and so you might conclude that they're painting grass, but then maybe you zoom out and you see that they've actually been painting a green shag rug in a hotel lobby. So for the most part, people learn faster and retain more when they are given sufficient information about the steps in a process, instead of just given the steps by themselves. They're watching it happen and they're being told the how and why. Now, when we think about taking tutorials, that step that takes one minute to do in the video might actually only take 10 to 20 seconds to do, but the instructor may have been moving more slowly and providing information during the process, which dragged it out to one minute. Let's say we cut that time. So for every one minute of tutorial, it takes us 20 seconds to do it ourselves. And now instead of two hours to complete, that one hour tutorial takes us about one hour and 12 minutes. And if you wanna add some margin of error in there, then say it takes you about one hour and 30 minutes. If you get kind of stuck on something, you had to go back and rewatch some stuff a couple times, poke around on your end. Now, if there's one thing I'm eternally grateful for in modern video playback interfaces, it's the 2x speed button. I use it for just about every kind of technical, informational video and audio I consume. That hour-long tutorial just turned to 36 minutes. I try to get away with this whenever I can, and I attribute most of my current expertise to learning materials I consumed at 2x speed. However, this isn't the magic bullet. Early on, when the 2x button first descended from the heavens onto my playback controls, I used it for everything to my detriment. The dangers of consuming things at 2x are basically 2x the danger of learning things normally. You're now twice as likely to miss a key piece of information and spend twice the amount of time navigating the video timeline. There are good teachers who keep their learning materials lean and concise, who speak at a nice, fluent pace and offer practical context to each thing that they teach. These teachers are the ones I use 2x less often with or opt for a 1.5x or 1.25x. We're given moments of opportunity to form conclusions about whatever we're being taught. And in that little moment, our brains get ready to catch up with the next thing it just heard. And sometimes the next thing helps add context. If we don't have time to consume and digest that information because our mind was busy processing the last thing, then the new thing is useless, as if we never even heard it. 
This is all about where your attention lays. Is your attention on what it's being told? Or is your attention with the last thing that it was being told? Or is your attention on the previous thing that it was being told? Magicians exploit this exact idea all the time for what's called misdirection. They pull seemingly impossible feats by diverting your attention. They control where you focus, so your mind never even acknowledges the part of their trick that would give them away had you been watching closely. Filmmakers also do this, which is why there are films with exciting turns of plot that you can go back and watch a second time only to see that all the clues were right there in front of you the whole time. They were just in the background while you focused on all the distractions that the filmmakers fed you. All right, so when do I use 2x speed? How do I use it? I use it when I start to recognize larger patterns that I have explicitly experienced myself. If I show you how to cook a pasta salad, you might be able to zip through the part where I show you how to cook the pasta because you've cooked pasta before. And even if there are some cool little extra methods in there that makes my pasta cook different, your brain will eat up and spit out all the stuff you already know so it wouldn't be distracted come the moment where you hear something new. There's no need to process stuff it already knows. It's not busy making sense of stuff it already knows. All day, your brain is literally going, uh-huh, yeah, I got you, millions of times over and over again. But when something new comes along, as long as it can be recognized as new, it will stop and try making sense of it. This is exactly why I keep my fingers on the speed shortcuts on YouTube. So when I get those new things, I can do a quick rewind and set the speed back to normal. When I'm learning things, I start at 2x, but I'm always ready to slow it back down until I start recognizing patterns that I'm already comfortable with. When I'm feeling particularly rushed or reckless, I keep my fingers on the arrow keys and the JKL keys as well. Arrow keys skip around by five seconds at a time and J and L at 10 seconds at a time. So playback speed, it's very helpful, but you have to know when to use it. I'm curious to know if any of my students, people have taken my Gumroad courses or watched my tutorials, do you use the 2X on my lessons? Did you turn it on and off? Which parts needed more of your attention? Let me know in the comments and if you're looking to make a horror game or Metroidvania, be sure to check out my full courses on how to make them even if you're a beginner. Links in the description.